All right. What's up, Facebook world? Once again, um, or YouTube world, or wherever you're looking at me from, um, this is another particular video. Um, I'm still looking at polynomials. Now, this particular problem I'm going to do is kind of long, so get your pen and paper out um, and be ready. We're dealing with linear factorization of polynomials through complex conjugates, and it's pretty long. If you mess up, though, again, it's not a good look. You need to pay attention and work slowly um, with the problem. All right? Take care of the problem just like it's you and your car, you and your baby or whatnot. You got to take care and pay close attention to detail. All right? Or it's going to treat you bad. And we don't want that. So let's look at the problem and go from there. All right? So the problem asks me, I got a complex number, Z complex number z equals 1 minus 2i is a 0 of f of x equals 4x to the fourth plus 17x squared plus 14x plus 65. All right, I need to find the remaining uh, zeros of f of x and write its linear factorization alright so now you're probably going to ask me how I do this I'm going to go ahead and zoom in for y'all so y'all can see this here of course all right, so complex number z equals 1 minus 2i, the zero of the function f4x to the fourth plus 17x squared plus 14x plus 65. I want to find my remaining zeros of the function and write its linear factorization. So I, only, I already have one. I need to find all of the other ones. All right, this is my one zero that I got right there. Okay, so, in order for me to do such a thing, what's the first thing you think we gotta do, sir? Um, well, I think the first thing we do is uh, set up the problem. Okay, we set up the problem, but how do we do that? What type of division are we gonna use? Long um, or synthetic? Synthetic. All right, so we're gonna use synthetic division to figure this out. Now, I have, if it gives me a zero already, it didn't say, you know, um, x equals, um, well not x equals, but didn't say something like given zeros are 5, 2, and 3. You know what I mean? Where you have to do like x. Mm -hmm. If it says plus 2, it's x minus 2 to solve for x. Instead of this, it's going to be 1 plus 2i. I mean, I'm sorry, 1 minus 2i, what's given to us, all right? So we put 1 minus 2i in our corner box. All right, so those of you out there and know what a corner box is, it looks like that. And within the corner box, we put our what? On the side of the corner box, we put what? Our what? Um, of the problem. I mean, of the polynomial. Uh, P of X. Hmm? Or not the P of X, but... Um, what, do we, what do we put there? The beginning. These are our... What are these called? Uh, coefficients. Coefficients, right? Synthetic division allows us to use coefficients to work the problem out. So... We use 4, and it's to the 4th. But guess what? We go from 4 to 2 in our exponents. We don't have a 3, so what do we put there? A 0. A 0. Good. So then here we got 17, 14, and 65. I draw my little line right here. Like I say to my students and stuff, I drop it like it's hot right here. I put a 4, add there, and now I'm going to multiply. And you probably out there, y'all probably looking at me like, um... But how I multiply a letter like that <laughs> and a number like that and it be design and it work out? That's okay. You just have to relax a little bit because it's gonna work itself out. All right. So let's say you multiply four times one minus two i, and it looks something like if if I was to do it over here on the side, four times one minus two i, I distribute using the distributive property, right? So here I get four minus eight i. Does that make sense? 
So here, 4 minus 8i. And I'm going to write it right here. 4 minus 8i. But I'm going to add. So 0 plus 4 minus 8i is 4 minus 8i. Alright? Now, I'm going to multiply these two together. 4 minus 8i and 1 minus 2i. Now, how I'm going to do that is I'm going to foil them, okay? So, 1 minus 2i, for instance, would go here. And then 4 minus 8i would go here. So, when I do the foiling, you got first, outside, inside, last, right? So, I do first is 4, minus 8i, minus 8i is minus 16i, plus the negative, negative, the positive, right? And then 16i squared. But i squared is negative 1, y'all. So 4 minus 16i minus 16 gives me negative 12 minus 16i. Do you, do you understand that? How we got that? So the negative 12 minus 16i goes here. Oops. And then I add. So 17 plus negative 12 is 5 minus 16i. And I do the exact same thing, okay? Those of you out there, as well as Scott, make sure you guys are writing this stuff down so you can follow it when you get back home or wherever you're at. Now, I take 5 minus 16i and multiply it times 1 minus 2i. When I fold that out, what it's going to be is, is negative 27 minus 26i. I add 14 plus negative 27, I get negative 13 minus 26i. Then I multiply this out times 1 minus 2i also. So let's say I do that on the side. 1 minus 2i times 13, negative 13, excuse me, minus 26i, and I fold. So first is going to be negative 13 minus 26i plus 26i plus the negative negative the positive 26 times 2 is 52 and i squared is negative 1 so it'll be uh, 52 i squared now this cancels out with that and i got negative 13 basically um, plus or I'm sorry, minus 52, because it, I squared is negative 1, so minus 52 equals a negative 65. So, negative 65 goes here, and on the end I have a 0. You see that? So, it actually ends up working out to a number, if you guys see that. So, 65 minus 65 is going to be 0. Now, now that I have that, I'm going to now take the next, um, I just proved that 1 minus 2i is in fact a 0 by the fact that I get here. And once we have 0 here, this means that it divides evenly. Alright, that's what I have my kids always say so they know what's going on. It divides evenly. At this point, the conjugate, if this is, if this, I proved that 1 minus 2i is a 0, that automatically means that on complex conjugates, the conjugate of 1 minus 2i is 1 plus 2i, right? You gonna agree with that? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take 1 plus 2i, put it in the corner box using the zeros. I'm sorry, not using the zero, but using the values that I have here. So now I'm going to take 1 plus 2i in a corner box and put these values where these were on the beginning portion. Okay? Anybody have any questions on that so far? Do you have any questions on it so far? Alright, do you need a second to write that down? Mm -hmm. uh, I'll give you and you guys out there about 30 seconds or so or 45 seconds to write that down. Then I'm going to continue. This problem might be a two video problem because it's kind of long. So We'll see what happens in a second. Again, it's one of those problems that um, if you don't do it right, it's not going to be a good look for you because you're going to do it all over again. Okay?
Mm -hmm. All right. So, I want to go ahead and erase this part here. Oh, if you need to write stuff down, of course, you can always pause the video. All right. Now, we take one plus two i, corner box it, we have four, four minus eight i, five minus 16 i, and negative 13 minus 26 i. Draw a line, drop it like it's hot here, four plus, we get four plus eight i here, right? And we add it, we're gonna get uh, eight by itself. Multiply this and this together, we're gonna still get eight minus, or I'm sorry, plus 16 i. That goes away, so five plus eight is 13. Multiply that times that, we're gonna get 13 plus 26 i, we're gonna get zero again. So, it's got zero here, zero here at the end, it means it divides evenly again, right? So we hit, again, divide evenly. And here are, is my coefficients, or what I, what I normally call my last line. Mm -hmm. All right? Um, and I'm going to get the original equation was 4x to the fourth. Mm -hmm. I did it one time. That was to the third. I did it again. This is going to be to the squared. So the polynomial that I end up with is 4x squared plus 8x plus 13. And I have all pluses. There's no negative signs here. So that's how I get my coefficients of the, of the remaining polynomial. Now, as you see, we cannot factor this out directly because no factor of 13 and 4 gives me an 8 as a middle number. So I'm kind of stuck on that as far as factoring is concerned. What I'm going to do is, is do, use the quadratic equation to work that out, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. In the next video, we'll continue this problem and finish it off. All right? Thank you very much.